Hello all, it's Dr. Dave Mastak talking about reciprocity.com. The E is spelt with a three. I'm a professor of innovation strategy and entrepreneurship. And I'm trying to create this sharing economy proofreading platform because I truly believe that everybody should be able to get all of the feedback that they desire to become prolific. So in this particular video, I really want to talk about dealing with statistical conclusion validity. This is part of my Nerd Out Wednesday series where I talk about things in science that I really like and I, and I think are really interesting. And I was recently reading through Scandish Cook and Campbell's book on experimental and quasi-experimental designs. Um, and I highly recommend for you to go check this out and read through. It's an amazing, super great book and very logical and, and interesting. But um, the particular thing I wanted to talk about is dealing with low statistical power with a experiment. So I'm going to go through how you can actually deal with low statistical power go into what do I mean by statistical conclusion validity and then finally you know sort of wrap it up with all these different sort of factors and how you can actually improve your statistical power so the first thing that is what I want to go through is what is statistical conclusion validity well this is where you draw some sort of conclusion based on statistics you look at you run basic statistics and then finally uh, you draw some conclusion from that. You look at maybe it's more significant and there is a significant relationship. And you conclude, well, then it must exist that there's some sort of relationship that's there. But the problem is, is that there's many different factors uh, that make it such that you can actually see a relationship or not see a relationship between variables. And it's really difficult to sort of tease that apart. What is a true effect and what is not a true effect? Um, and one of the factors that is really important is low statistical power. So what exactly is that? You just think of it as sort of a ratio between signal and noise of an effect, right? So if there's a lot more noise than there is signal, then you're going to have low statistical power because you're not going to be able to see an effect. Um, if you have a lot more signal than you do noise in the relationship, then it's going to be really easy to see some sort of effect. So anything that relates to statistical power is really talking about the relationship between signal and noise. The more uh, noise that you have, the more difficult it is going to that, that you're in, the more difficult it is going to to find a relationship. The the um, more signal that you have, the easier it is to find a relationship in some in in some sort of um, experimental quasi experimental design. So there's different ways that you can actually go through and improve the statistical relationship that you have in your design. The first one is just look for measurement. Um, or measure for what I, I would consider like powerful um, covariance. Ones that really truly matter to the relationship that you're looking at. The more that you control for with the different covariate covariance, the more of the variance that the more variance that you can controlling for, the more the littler effect that you need to observe to actually get some sort of statistical effect, right? And so you want to look for ones that are really truly powerful and they really truly matter. That's my doggies. Um, and I, the other thing, the, a couple of other things that you can do is actually um, do matching of some sort, right? So you match maybe two different people together that have sort of like-mindedness. What that does is that removes all the relation, all the sort of factors um, outside of that matching. So you could just look at the difference between those two particular individuals, or maybe it's two different companies. Whatever it is, you're just looking at the relationship between those two things, and everything else doesn't necessarily matter, right? So it reduces all the other effects of everything else, and that really, really is effective. It's a strong way to get statistical conclusion or to, get, to increase your power. Um, I've done it before. It's great. Um, the other one is to, and this is what everybody sort of tends to recommend, and um, it's probably not the best thing because it's not going to improve the design that you actually have, but just get a larger sample size. And um, generally, the rule is, you know, if you have one variable, you need about 30 observations. That's where the student T distribution actually meets the normal distribution and, and um uh, and then you can actually draw some sort of conclusions. And the more variables you get, 
uh, the higher the sample that you're going to need. So to get maybe if you have like, say, 10 variables, you need, um, you know, a couple hundred observations, maybe even three, 400 observations. Eventually, what's going to happen is that you're going to the, the more variables you need, the sample sort of, you don't need nearly as much um, obs observations. If you're, you start getting up to a couple thousand observations, you can, you can include a lot of variables, crazy amount of variables, and it's not gonna really affect your power tremendously, it's, it's, it's asymptotic after a while, right? Um, so anyways, the other thing that you can do is improve the treatment that you have, right? So the treatment really does matter. So if you're looking at some sort of effect, whatever it is, you just want to look at something, you want to have a treatment that is going to have a large effect, right? So think of it, you can give somebody, so you have a little teaspoon of medicine, whatever it is. Well, that teaspoon of medicine might only have a small effect, but if you give somebody maybe a gallon of that particular medicine, it's going to have a huge effect and it's going to do something, right? So you want to look at sort of improving the treatment in some sort of way. Um, you can improve the measurement as well. So that's another factor that you can go through. Just improve the different measurement of the things that you're looking at. Um, so you want to just get more precise, right? So look at a different mechanism, for example, that might be more precise in what you're looking at. That's going to be really incredibly effective. Um, and then last but not least, it's really um, quite nice and a lot of people don't talk about this per se is just uh, get more similar subjects right so if you have a wide range of different subjects a wide range of different people that are participating or firms or whatever what you can do is actually pare that down and get really similar um, groups it's essentially like controlling your controlling for variables and that's going to reduce the amount of other factors that are contributing to the relationship it's going to reduce the the noise it's going to improve your signal by doing that right so it's a really effective way if you look at clinical studies for example that's the reason why they only have you know 17 different people in that particular study or some really small amount is because they have very, very high signal um, to the noise. And the way that they do that is they screen participants. They're looking for certain types of participants before they go into the study. That's going to really greatly increase the signal. Um, and if you can imagine that the really does you know, improve a lot of different things. They also focus on very specific mechanisms, for example. So that's going to increase their measurement. Um, you know, it's going to make the measurement that much more powerful, I guess. And so they're really concerned about having very large samples because sometimes these experiments are dangerous, right? So they want to reduce the samples um, early on. They want to make sure it's really small and they're only exposing a, a very small risk. So they have to do all of these procedures, like uh, make sure that they're very, very similar subjects. They're controlling for a bunch of um, other sort of factors that are playing, that they have a very powerful treatment, whatever that would be, however that looks like. Um, they have a very precise measurement and all of those things allow them to do experiments and get effects on say maybe 10, 17 different subjects or something like that. Really small numbers of individuals and that, that is quite powerful technique. So if you can design whatever you're looking at, make sure it's really powerful that you can, um, that there's a large amount of signal that you're looking at and very little noise to the experimental design or the design of your experiment, that's going to greatly increase the study and the effect of this study so um that's it that's what i'd recommend for you to do i've defined i went through and defined statistical conclusion validity i also went through and talked about power um it was one sort of threat to statistical conclusion validity and then finally i went through different factors and how to improve your statistical conclusion validity and i'd highly recommend if you're interested in any of this stuff go to the scandish book um, or Shaddish book, sorry, Shaddish Cook and Campbell, um, and, and read it. It's a great read, super fascinating stuff, lots of interesting insights there, very, um, very powerful book. So uh, that's what I recommend for you to do. That's all I'm going to say at this moment. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the, no, don't, if you like it, give me a like this video, give me a old thumbs up, and I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye.